How's it going? This is James from Yummy Done Right. Um, today we're going to do a crazy experiment. We've never tried to cook this before. We're going to be cooking some buffalo broccoli bites. So to start out, what you need is a full head of broccoli. Isn't um, that cauliflower? It's cauliflower. Oh. <laughs> We're making cauliflower bites, not broccoli bites. Because, yeah, the kids don't like broccoli, I guess. Um, but what we're going to need is um, about a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and uh, four tablespoons of buffalo sauce seasoning, um, some flour, and some cheese, and some eggs. And again, I don't know how much flour, or cheese, or eggs because this is our first time. Yeah. All right, so to make it easy, I've got me a big knife and a little paring knife. And I like to use a little paring knife to get in underneath all here once I cut it. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. And then I can use my paring knife. And cut all the way around and get my broccoli out. Cauliflower. Cauliflower. It's cauliflower, not broccoli. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know why I keep saying that, but it's cauliflower. I'll get it right eventually. But it's a lot easier to work around the stem with the smaller paring knife. Okay, next we're going to feed it into the food processor. I forget what my kitchen utensils are. And we're going to top it up until we got, you know, little chunks. Probably like that. If you got a ninja like us, and we love our ninja, all you have to do is give it a couple pulses. <laughs> So we're going to do the other half. Sometimes you got to cut it up so it all fits, especially if you got a small food processor. Good survivor. Yeah. All right, so our cauliflower, yeah, I got it right this time, is done. Um, kind of like cottage cheese almost. But a uh, rule that I always follow when I'm making new things is to mix dry ingredients with dry ingredients and first that way everything's equal or even. So I'm going to start with my little container of buffalo seasoning. 
uh, two tablespoons of it, a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper, and a teaspoon of salt. There you go. And we're just gonna mix it up with our hands because we like to be hands on. So don't worry, I made him wash his hands beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny, we called this a crazy experiment, but that's pretty much every recipe in our book is a, something that we just decided to make and kind of wung it. Even if it was something that we tried at a restaurant or anything like that, we were like, hey, I'm going to make it at home. And tried to make it without a recipe. All right, so next we're going to go with the cheese. And I'm probably going to start, this is a one pound block, and I'm going to probably start with a quarter of the block. We're going to do kind of a small grate. All right. Trying to get some bigger chunks. We're using Colby Jack. It kind of tends to fall apart with the cheese grater, but we're going to mix it up again. If you make a mess, don't worry about it. That's the best part about cooking. Alright, so we got our cheese mixed in. I went ahead and took a little little bite of it just to taste test and I found out it needs more buffalo seasoning, so that's why we started out with four. But here's the other two. I'm gonna mix that in quick. I'm not gonna worry about mixing it in too much because we're gonna mix the eggs in next. We're gonna start out with one egg. See how the texture is. I bet your kids would love this if you have any. What we want is just a little bit of moisture because once we don't want it to be too wet. Just enough that when we add the flour it'll help hold it together. But I think one egg will do it. Okay. All right, so the next step is to form it into balls or um, patties. We tried two different methods of trying to get it to stick into a ball. Um, one was just making a ball in your hand with that and then dunking it in flour and then putting it on a plate. It worked the first time, but then after the second time, once my hands were wet from the stuff, um, it stuck to my hands and didn't work anymore. So the other one thing we tried is just mixing the flour with it and it's working now. So um, we're gonna go with the second route because it's working. And we're gonna start with probably about three quarters of a cup of flour. And mix it in. See what the consistency we get is. And if we can start forming it into balls, which I think we should be able to, we're going to make as many as we can on the plate, and then we're going to stick them in the freezer for about 45 minutes so they stay together when we drop them in our oil. Alright, so we got our flour mixed in with the cauliflower and now it's actually staying together. 
Now, three quarters of the cup is what did it for me. I brought extras because you know, it's not an exact science just because the cauliflower's heads are all sorts of different sizes. So, best bet is bring extra, extra materials. All right, we're almost done uh, with the first batch. Still got enough to make a whole nother plate full. Um, everything we do is hands-on and um, most of the stuff we make we get pretty dirty. If you got kids, um, for all you moms and dads out there, take a good look at my hands. Your kids are gonna love making these. <laughs> and it's actually been proven that if your kid's a picky eater, if they help you make it, they're more likely to eat it. Just something fun. So I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna put this first batch in the freezer for 45 minutes. And then we'll get to frying them. All right, we're back. Uh, we've had our balls. Or brock cauliflower balls, buffalo balls in the uh, freezer for 45 minutes and they stayed together. Um, I've had the oil heating up. Um, I've got it at a kind of medium low heat. Uh, best way to tell if you don't have a thermometer, um, if it's going to be ready, is you just kind of dab your finger in the water and Get a drop in there, and if it sizzles, it means your water's done, or your oil is ready to cook in. So, I am terrified that these are going to fall apart, so we're going to do it one at a time, very slowly. And it's a moment of truth. And you want to let them it until I would say until it, it's pretty much done uh, stop bubbling as much I'll probably let them sit in there for two or three minutes we'll see how the first one turns out all right that was about a minute then and a half pull them out when they're golden brown put them on something that you can dry them on I do just use a cookie cooling rack. All right, let's get some more going. Don't be too worried if you burn the first couple um, that's normal when you're frying food, the oil tends to get hot and then once you start cooking with it, it gets the air in the cool, cooled down food um, in there and it kind of tends to equalize and you get a better meal. I forgot to mention, um, I'm using vegetable oil. My favorite oil to fry anything with is peanut oil just because I like the flavor of it even though it's not very healthy for you at all, um, but any oil will do as long as um, as long as you can completely submerge them. Most of the time, when you're frying something, especially if you don't know what it is or how long it needs to cook, the best indicator for you to know when it's done is when it starts floating. done and we brought the kids in uh, to try them out because if the kids don't like them then you're never going to get them to eat so as long as it's kid approved you won't have any fuss. Um, we also got some green goddess or green ranch because <laughs> that's basically what it is um, for them to dunk it in. So go ahead and try to see what you No, 
one. Matt wants to try They're not it. Not very good taste testers, I guess. They like it. So that's a plus. I think it tastes pretty good. Mm. Tastes yummy. Oh, good. Definitely make these again. Mm -hmm. I, I like them in the ranch. You like them in the ranch? Yep. Cool. I think that's it for you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and follow us and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.